Right, today you can learn about XP. The simple little things to some people, it's hard to other people, and some people don't know how to do it. Alright, we're going to change the language and open up region and language. Now, sometimes what happens is you get a computer and it's in another language, even though it is in English, but it's based out of Arabia or wherever else, and it causes problems when you go for a download. We'll try the simple and make sure everything's here. Is if you're United States, United States. Same thing with the languages. In advance, make sure that is also United States language. And hit apply, and that's pretty much it. And the computer will usually restart. Also, to view file types, you go to the control panel, the folder options, go to the file types. Oh, that was the wrong one. Go to view, I'm sorry. And uncheck. Hide extensions for known file types. And hit apply. Instead of just seeing something with the name, now you'll see that file type at the end. In this instance, it's a GIF image. One advantage of doing that is you can hide files from peering eyes. You can put, I usually put it in a Windows folder. Well, here you're going to click on the bitmap here, or somebody's going to click on it, they're going to see what's going on, or they're going to try to see what you have for a photo here which will be to no avail to them. As you can see it is absolutely worthless because it's not a picture. It's actually a text document. So the way around that is I can change you can change it to a text TXT or DOC RTF doesn't matter it will all read all the same programs. TXT it is my old girlfriend's cell number maybe I'll forget to record it. Oops. Actually, the best way that I find doing it is, it is naming it a DLL file. You can name it anything you want. You can name it Steve DLL, John Doe DLL, or your girlfriend's name, whatever, and put it in a System32 file. And anybody sees it, they're not going to know it's there. You will know it's there by the name. You go in, change it over to text, and read it, write the get recall, or whatever the information is. You can do the same thing with pictures. You can do the same thing with videos. The video can be the text, the video can be a picture and vice versa any way you want it doesn't matter, it will not ruin the file in any way next I've had a few questions on how to get the calculator so you're going to go to programs accessories calculator same thing applies with uh, command prompt, it's in the same area you go over to accessibilities, you can have the onboard, I'm sorry, on screen keyboard your narrator, your magnifier, which I believe is in Vista. For entertainment, you have your sound recorder and your volume your volume control. Let me look down here if there's anything else you guys need. And here's your system restore. This is not where you shut system restore off at. You shut it off in the control panel. This is where you can make a restore point or go back. I'm sorry, I was uh, on system information. I meant system restore, and that's what I was talking about. All right, let's get out of here. Now, next, when your drivers fail, for instance, sound, you're going to go back to the control panel, system, and you want to get to the device manager. You do that by going to hardware, device manager. Obviously, the sound. If you have a yellow question mark, that means you do not have the driver. If you see everything that's here is is operable, there's no everything's here, and you still have no audio. It's actually rather simple. You can do one or two things. Delete will be here, I think. No, I'm sorry. You can update your driver. You can scan for hardware changes. That's what I forgot to mention when you have the yellow question marks up here you can right click and delete and you restart the computer and the computer will realize that the drivers are missing and you'll have your drivers back and your sound will be back that's where I slipped up for a moment there now it doesn't just apply to sound it can also apply to your CD-ROM you have an issue you see a question mark here you can delete update do whatever you do as long as you alter what's here the system especially XP will recognize that something has changed and upon restart if not right away We'll reinsert the drivers. Next, because if I don't do this, I'll never hear the end from you guys. You want to know how to change your themes.
you're on the desktop, you right click, go to properties, go to appearance. For the rest of the directions, you got to send me 1995 too. No, I'm only kidding. Go to advanced, and there you go. Change everything here as you want. Window, scroll, palette, title. This is where you change the font. You change the colors, so on and so forth. And it's rather easy. It actually takes about five minutes, at most. Also, many of you wanted to take your pictures and put them as screensaver. Well, while you're here in display, hit screensaver. Go down to screensaver and select my picture slideshow. And you go through settings. And you can make your you can make your additions or changes from there. It'll go right to your My Pictures folder and use the pictures editor there. Another thing is how to organize your start menu. Alphabetical order is one way. Programs, open it up, right click, sort by name, and it'll all go in alphabetical order. Another thing to find out where your errors are or find out about your errors, you go to Control Panel. It's actually nice that you can do this. Go to Administrative Tools. Go over to Event Viewer. And select Application. Security. System. Antivirus. Whatever you want. You see something you're interested in. You click on it. You can refresh, view properties. To get the information from what you see, for instance the error, you double click on it. And here's your information here. Same thing applies for regular information that is also non-caustic. Alright, close this out. Also, how to change your time zone. Go down here to the clock in the corner. Right click. Select time zone for me. It's Eastern. It's minus five hours. You select that, hit apply, and that's pretty much done. You can change the sync server here if you want. You can hit update. It's not going to do much, but it may change it by a few seconds. Which you can get them from .govs and all that just by going to Google and, and typing in synchronization for internet servers. One thing that bugs me, uh, I remember, I thought it was in Service Pack 2, I guess. I was able to change it to military time. But, uh, and you guys know how to do that. Please let me know how to change it to military time. Alright, that concludes this video because we're only allowed 10 minutes on this stupid thing here, YouTube. If you have any questions or any recommendations, feel free to send me an email. Alright guys, take care. Thanks for watching.